Hey guys, how's it going? Mr. Mitchell here. In this video, we're going to recap resultant vectors. This is something you would have done at National 5 level, but it's also useful for higher level. So let's get started. Okay, so we're going to start by looking at what happens when you add two vectors together, and then we're going to look at resultant vectors. So when adding two vector quantities together, you should remember that the direction of each must be taken into account. So we always draw vectors as a straight line with an arrow pointing in the direction that the vector would be going in. And there's one important rule which you should remember from National 5, which is that two vectors are added by joining the nose of one to the tail of the other. So you need to remember to add vectors nose to tail. Now instead of using the word nose, you might have used the word head before or arrow, and instead of tail, you might just say the bottom of the vector instead. So if we're adding two vectors in one dimension, this is the easiest example of what you could get. So let's say we had a vector of this length pointing in this direction, and we added it to a vector of this length pointing in the opposite direction. Then if we combine those together and add them, you'll see that I've joined them nose to tail here. So I've joined the tail of this one to the nose of this one, and it looks like this, overlapping. But you might remember a more common example, which is adding two vectors together at right angles. So let's say we take a vector of this length pointing in this direction, and we add it to another vector pointing in this direction. Then what we would get once we add it nose to tail is this thing here. So let's say I added the tail here to the nose here and moved it up then it would look like this. And you'll see that it forms a right angle in there. Now this isn't the only way that I could add the two vectors nose to tail. I could also have added the nose of this one to the tail of this one. So it would have looked like this instead, along and then up. Thinking about resultant vectors now, when adding two vectors together, the result is called the resultant vector. So the resultant vector is the final vector drawn from the start to the finish point after adding the two vectors together. And you'll often see the resultant vector with two arrows on it, just to make it different from the other individual vectors. So if we take our example from before, in one dimension, we add this vector to this vector, and we get out this resultant vector. And the reason it's pointing in this direction and it's only this length is that if we go back to our first example, you'll see that my final vector from the start to the finish point will go from the start down here to the finish point which is here because we're going from the bottom all the way up and back to here so my finish point is there so my shortest distance from the start to the finish is going from here to here and that's what this green arrow shows you here and looking at the resultant vector for the case of adding vectors at right angles you'll see that if we added this one to this one just as before we end up with a resultant vector that looks like this because we're going from the starting point to the finishing point and it's the shortest distance and you'll often see the two arrows on here pointing in the direction that the resultant vector is going in from start to finish and that makes it different to these two individual vectors with one arrow on it. Lastly, remember there are two methods to find the resultant vector when adding two vectors at right angles, so we can use either the scale diagram method or the calculation method. So remember for the scale diagram method you'll need to use a ruler and a protractor to find your angle, and you need to choose a scale first of all. And for the calculation method, remember that uses Pythagoras with c squared equals a squared plus b squared to find the magnitude of the resultant vector, and then you need to use tan theta equals opposite over adjacent to find your direction. You would also have to use compass points or bearings to state your final direction as well. If you want some practice on those two methods, then check out the worked example video for resultant vectors. That's all from me, folks. I hope you found the video useful. If you did, give it a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.